Right. It's probably a good idea to start getting into actual topics here. This one's going to be rather short uh, because the ideas presented in it are fairly ludicrous, and I don't really want to dig into the person specifically. Uh, Mike here. Thank you very much, Spooky Stan, uh, for the follow. I do not know a lot about Mike. I've heard his name posited around over and over again. So it is. it would be irresponsible of me to dig in super far into this. But there is a take here that I wanted to go ahead and, and analyze for a second because it, it just seems absurd to me. But let's go ahead and pop the video on. And, and the one thing about charity streams and things like that. Um, that's a bit loud. Hold on. Let me fix that real quick for you guys. Is their self-promotion vehicles primarily. Um, and I don't like that. Okay. A real. So hold on. So what he's what he's talking about right now is the charity that Vosh did over on his channel, a charity that I would have been participating in had I not been suspended from Twitch at the time, which would have gotten his channel a suspension ha uh, had I actually appeared on it. Which is you know great. Anywho. Okay, so the idea that charity, you don't like charity when it involves self-promotion. My question is, how would you avoid charity as, uh, and how would you avoid, avoid self-promotion in charity? Because you have a couple of options. You can either be large and use your audience and use your leverage and bring in other creators, basically spreading your wings as far as you can go to get as many donations in as possible for charity that you can get. Or you can go and be wholly unpragmatic and host a charity where nothing happens. Nobody, nobody donates or the amount do do that's donated is significantly lower. I can understand the idea that, oh, this this charity wasn't done with the right intention. But here's the thing. There is a difference between two particular moral theories, the theories of deontology and the theories of consequentialism. A deontological perspective would be that the charity is not good because the intentions behind the charity were wholly self-promotion. Now, ignoring the fact that saying a statement like that requires you to be able to read somebody's mind 110 percent like a, a deontology requires you to pretend that you can read into the intentions of another person which sometimes through context clues you can get but generally speaking is not a great tack i think and maybe this is just the pragmatist in me speaking but i think the consequentialist approach is a lot better in many cases where we instead we don't look at the intentions which someone can lie about which you can get wrong on your interpretations of we instead look at the consequences and the consequences of that stream were two hundred and fifty thousand dollars raised for a children's charity that largely helps give medical supplies to children who are in a very unstable region and very very desperately need those medical supplies now, my question is, which world would you rather live in? The world where all intent, all actions had the most pure intentions behind them, but the results were potentially lackluster, uh, maybe even completely and totally bad. Intention does not necessarily mean that consequences end up panning out. Or would you rather a world where, regardless of the intention of any action, the consequence was always good? Personally, I would rather have a world where everybody's actions led to good consequences because that is a world that would directly affect me well. A world where everybody's intentions are always good does not necessarily make a better world. It functionally can't. And I think that follows through on charity streams too. If you are going to do a charity stream, it is equally self Self-help, we were talking about this early on stream, this is a, a form of altruism, it is equally for your own benefit as it is to the benefit of others for you to spread your wings in that regard as large and as wide as you possibly can. We've only gone into 17, uh, 17 seconds. Let's go ahead and hear more of it. Willer NG, thank you very much for redeeming your... Oh, whoa! Well. Charity stream 
would be either somebody who doesn't stream often, streaming just for the purpose of doing the charity stream, or streaming on someone else's channel, hopefully to in order to support that organization. All right, so here's what happens with this take. You're trying to change arbitrarily the way that somebody goes about this. So let's say you've got somebody who is a streamer, so Vosh in this case, who has a large audience, and because they have a large audience, they're able to gain more donations. If you have somebody who doesn't stream generally, so their audience is going to be tiny, when you have people who don't stream generally, if they aren't already like majorly big names, they're not going to have that kind of influence. The end result of that action, that ideal world that you are trying to create with your ideal form of charity, is one in which no money or no adequate amount of money gets sent to charity. In Vosh's stream, about 80% of the funds that came in were all from low dollar donations. I know when, when I was watching, I was only able to donate like five bucks. That's about all I've got available when you factor in bills and shit. Thank you very much for the host, Avian. Um, the majority of the money that came in was from small donations. This would lead me to believe that having a larger audience of people willing to donate small amounts ultimately ends in the better consequence of there being more money going towards the charity. If you are somebody who doesn't stream regularly, then you're not going to have that same effect. There's going to be far fewer people tuning into your stream, therefore far fewer people donating to the charity. If your argument is that, oh, this person needs to go on someone else's channel, not all charities have their own channels. That's a weirdly diluted way of looking at charity. The idea that all charities would necessarily have a Twitch channel or necessarily have a YouTube channel. More importantly, that those charities would have those channels and those channels are as large as the channel that you could be using. Vosh is one of the larger uh, political streamers out there. There's no denying that fact. As a result, a charity on anybody else's channel, save maybe Hassan, <laughs> is not going to yield the same results and is not going to yield results of the same girth as doing the stream on his main channel. Also, I can go ahead and go into the, the issue with saying that, oh, it's only better if you if you appear on someone else's channel. Would that not also be a form of self-promotion? If I bring a creator onto my channel, that doesn't give me as much cross-promotion with that creator's audience as me going onto someone else's channel. It is far more beneficial for me, from a collaboration perspective, to be on someone else's channel than it is for me to pull somebody else onto my channel. Based on those experiences and the way those numbers work alone, it seems that the Kate, the point that it is less self-serving to do it on someone else's channel seems ludicrous because for me, it's always going to be more self-serving for me if I appear on someone else's channel. It's always going to be better for me if I appear on someone else's channel than if I bring them onto my channel. When I did, uh, when I did the stream with Hunter Avalone uh, last year, I did not get a bunch of people from his audience coming over to my channel, but he likely had a bunch of people from my audience coming over to his channel when we did our stream together talking out our differences. It was more beneficial for him because he hopped on mine. Just from a logistics perspective, this point is ludicrous. You know, that would be a true charity stream, but a lot of these charity streams are self-aggrandizing fests where you get a bunch of people to raid into you out of solidarity for the charity, you promote yourself, you 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 virtue signal as if you are um, a good person. Okay, again, from a consequentialist perspective, it doesn't matter. Even if you're a bad person, here's the thing. I, I care less that a bunch of people raided into Vosh. And again, had I been on Twitch, I would have been doing the same thing, fully and honest with everybody here. I would have been raiding into him at some point because I wasn't gonna stay up for 24 hours. I've done two 24 hour live streams. I don't have a reason to do another one of those for a while. Um, so, regardless of that, I care less for the moral purity of the streamer involved 
than I do for the result of getting people in need the help they require. If there's a, let, let's, let's give you a hypothetical. There's a politician. You have two possible worlds here. Uh, Atheist Mando, thank you very much for redeeming your, oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. You have two possible worlds here. Scenario A, you have a politician whose, whose actions will always be morally pure, but the consequences may not end up working, right? Uh, he may not end up having a campaign that is successful, so he's not able to actually uh, widen his reach in politics, or he is trying to do a charity stream, but because nobody knows his name, then there's not a lot of people there. We, we're dealing with perfect moral purity, but not necessarily perfect consequences. Now let's take the corrupt politician. Everything they're doing is for their own self-interest. It's all for that. But as a result, we get consequences like millions of dollars going to charity and helping people out there. Now I can understand that there's a perspective on billionaires here about how we could, we could call this a billionaire and suddenly it's bad. I get that. We can engage in that kind of whataboutism later. But the world that is created where there is mutual aid of some variety coming to people who need it, even if the act, the intents behind that mutual aid weren't necessarily 100% morally pure, I think is a better world on the mere fact that the net good in the world has increased. A single person being a little more scummy than you would like versus... Hundreds of thousands of people potentially getting help and medical supplies who wouldn't have been able to get it otherwise. And maybe that's a bit of a stretch because the end goal, the end was like $250,000 raised. I don't know exactly how far that money stretches. So we'll just say several thousand because I, I think maybe over 100,000 would be a stretch. Again, I don't know how that money gets divvied out. The immorality, the, the lack of moral purity for the one individual who you are criticizing here does not outweigh the thousands of people who are helped by their actions directly. So that, that'd be my take, but we got half the video to go through still. And, um, a lot of the money that gets, to, goes to charities goes toward the executive director, the finance director, the fundraising machinery. Okay, uh, so yes, it does, but you need to wonder, uh, you need to actually take into account which charity you're talking about. So let's say we're talking about a charity like the Salvation Army. That's not a charity that I would I would donate to because they have a bad track record of spending the money in, in terrible places and also not all the money going to the actual people who need it. Just like I really don't want to donate to Goodwill because they mistreat their employees and they try to spread Christian propaganda. Not, not a big fan, but... When we're talking about if you if you're going to have your argument against charity in general, the idea of charity, the institutions of charities, that puts you in the realm of a hasty generalization fallacy where you have to say charity bad regardless of who get help who gets helped by charity because some charities are bad. You have the ability to check charity you have the ability to check the track record of any charity. With the PCRF specifically, there was a track record in 2008, I want to say, where they were involved uh, supporting a, or not being, not supporting, but being financially tied to an organization that did in fact help Hamas. However, that organization doesn't really exist anymore, and all of the executives that were involved in that have been basically thrown in jail. They're out. As a result, the PCRF charity, at least I think it's, yeah, PCRF charity now ends up getting, I think it's four out of five stars on Charity Watch. And this is a thing you can look up. You can look up how well this charity does, how well it allocates its resources, how well it's doing what you're trying to have a charity do. These are things that are generally public knowledge if you have a watchdog group that is looking over them. As a result, I would say that if you're going to engage in the hasty generalization here, maybe it'd be a good idea to criticize the charity specifically, not all charities and the idea of charity. Um, and so 
as a leftist, I... I am a leftist as well. So, let's see where our opinions differ here. There is nothing leftist-like more than fucking infighting, I swear. find most charities to be highly problematic. And... I agree with this point. Actually, I, I agree with this point. <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> I, I, I think, but I, I think agreeing with this point doesn't change the fact that charity is still needed. Charity is problematic because it replaces uh, genuine mutual aid with uh, philanthropy in a lot of people's minds. Why would we need the government to intervene uh, with homelessness when we have charities that can that can help with homelessness? Why would we need the government to intervene uh, in cases of abuse when we have charities that are dealt uh, that are meant to deal with abuse? Structural, stable mutual aid gets replaced by generally geographically locked individual charities that can, in many cases, be mismanaged. I agree with this point. However, this point does not does not mean that charities are not needed. You see, the world in which charities are not needed is the world in which tax dollars are allocated perfectly. The world in which tax dollars are thrown exactly where they need to go to make sure that everybody always gets what's what they need in every situation, period. We do not currently live in that world, so while many charities are problematic, and while charities do end up operating directly against several uh, leftist ideas of mutual aid, ideas that I agree with, you nonetheless end up requiring them because we do not live in the world that can support itself without those charities right now, especially when there are people the kids in the Middle East who do not have access to adequate medical care. Nabdeko, thank you very much for redeeming your awo. So, I don't know, I guess the, the, the main point here is that there's a lot of really bad logic being used here. And maybe there's some context in the, in the other parts of this stream that I'm not getting. This is part of a very long stream. Uh, so, again, maybe there's some context outside of this clip that I'm not taking into consideration. If there is, let me know in the context, comment section below. But if you do, please, please, please make the argument not that I took him out of context. Make the argument directly about what I've said that takes him out of context and what specific disagreements there are. Because the mere fact that I'm responding to a small point doesn't mean that that's not representative of his idea. And I frankly don't have time to go through the entire stream. We have 10 seconds left of this, so let's go, or 20 seconds left of this. Let's just go through this real quick. Don't like the liberal mentality of philanthropy. Okay, again, I agree. Philanthropy, as a... In a lot of liberal mindsets, philanthropy is an adequate replacement for genuine mutual aid. Genuine yeah. mutual aid and philanthropy yeah. are not necessarily incompatible, though. You can have both of them. And mind you, mind you, thank you very much, Delta, for the follow. But mind you, when we're talking about genuine mutual aid, Vosh's stream was a sign of mutual aid being funded into a philanthropic organization. At least it, that's how it reads to me. It is both things acting in, in synchronicity to try to get help to people who need it. There's a type of compatibilism that we probably need to embrace for the time being when we're dealing with the broken-ass world that we're in right now. And I'm not saying broken in, like, the Christian way, oh, no, Eve ate the apple, and now the world is broken in sin. No, I'm meaning broken as in we, we have a world that is largely dominated by capitalist power, and you can't always, with... with a tiny stream, for instance, like if I were to do this on my stream, given how small it is, I could not just do things outside of the capitalistic structure and make it work. That's generally not going to function well. I'm going to have to use some of the mechanisms, as corrupt as they are, that are already in place to tr get things done, to get things to work. An example of that, Mike, you and I are both streaming. 
If I'm streaming on Twitch or on YouTube, I am working within a capitalist structure. I am working within a terms of service agreement that some private corporation was able to, to throw me into because they have so thoroughly monopolized a section of the internet but it is because they have monopolized that section of the internet that I can even get an audience in the first place. You need to work, and you are doing it right now, work within the structures that are binding you to make a world where those structures no longer bind people. To quote Lenin, the capitalist will sell you the rope you will use to hang him. Keep that mentality, keep that energy. Um, that's just not something that I like to do myself because I feel like it's disgusting, like it is profiting off of other people's misery, um, and it's bad. Okay, so, yes, there are charities that are profiting off of other people's mi uh, misery, but to use that as, a, as an argument against all charity, I think is not good. I don't know if there's a better way I can word that besides just not good. I think that it just it just doesn't function. Again, this is the whole reason I was railing on the consequentialist approach to things earlier. I am not a, a hardline consequentialist. I find myself somewhere between the two because I am a moral anti-realist. Specifically, I'm an air theorist. Um, none of that is important to the actual video itself, though. The reason that I brought the consequentialist stuff before is because... We have to work within reality, quite frankly. And the reality is, one of the best ways that we can get aid to another country is through charities that already have infrastructure set up there. You can't just do things outside of capitalistic infrastructure all the time, especially when you're trying to get results to, to happen. And if those results are getting medical supplies to children in the Middle East, then fuck it. Make your deal with the devil. I know that it's not fun. I know that it feels bad and wrong. But it's a compromise you're going to have to make if you want to make the world a better place versus just complaining that it's not already better. That said, thank you very much, everybody, for watching this video. If you have any criticisms of what I have said or anything here, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you haven't already, and as always, everyone, insert into video tagline here.